So you've made the decision, you're gonna buy a home. The problem is we use a little bit of a different language in real estate. Are you familiar with the lingo? In no particular order, we're gonna go through some lingo used in real estate to make sure that you are fully informed when you're making your purchase. The first one I'd like to talk about is appraisal. If you're financing a loan, everyone has to have an appraisal. The appraisal is there in order to protect the bank. The lender that's gonna be lending the money in the house wanna make sure that they lend the appropriate amount of money that the house isn't too overpriced. It's a professional analysis used by professional appraisers to determine exactly how the house is valued based on comparables in the same neighborhood of the same like type home. It's necessary for your lender to have this in order to give you the final approval for your loan. It's done at the end of the escrow process. So what is escrow? Escrow is the process in which the buyer and seller hire a third party independent group that collects all the information in order to make your transaction legal. They hold the earnest money from the buyer, they hold the contracts from everybody else in the, in the transaction, and at the very end, they will balance the statements with the bank in order to make sure everything lines up correctly and they'll be responsible for collecting the signatures of both the buyer and seller in an appropriate manner in order to record. When you're making a purchase in real estate, you will have to have a credit score. A credit score is determined by financial institutions based on the timeliness of you making your loan payments on other debts and how long you've had debts. This number gets calculated over a period of time. If you don't have a high enough credit score, don't worry, you can change these things. They have credit repair services and other tactics that we use or that lenders use in order for you to be able to get your credit score increased. When you're purchasing a home, you need to have a down payment. However, there are some programs out there that require 0% down. Talk to your lender about this, or if you don't have one, let me know. I've got some very good lenders that I work with. The misconception out there is it takes 20% down to buy a home. That's not true. We've got programs conventional with 3.5% down. We have VA programs with 0% down. We've got FHA programs with Washington bond credits that'll help you with your down payment. There's a lot of programs out there. I'm just a real estate agent. I don't pretend to know all the programs out there. That's why I trust my lenders. That's why you should talk to a lender as soon as possible if you're considering making a purchase so you know what kind of down payment you want to have. The next term I'd like to introduce to you is mortgage rate. What is the mortgage rate? A mortgage rate is the interest rate that you're going to pay over the life of the loan. Typically these days, we're doing fixed rate interest rates. A few years ago, they used to do a lot of adjustables. We're gonna leave those alone for now because there's not a lot of them done right now, but these mortgage rates are very important. Mortgage rates determine the kind of house and the size of the house you can buy. They're very, very important. It's a great opportunity to take advantage of them when they're artificially low. Every lender has got a formula on how they're gonna calculate your mortgage rate. Some will ask for more down payment. Some will have different fees mixed in. So it's important that even if you do have a lender, that maybe you shop that a little bit, you talk to other lenders to find out what they would offer you. Everyone's trying to earn your business, give them a chance to. Another term that is often used in real estate is a pre-approval letter. Pre-approval letters is another term we use a lot in real estate. People think they're incredibly important and they are. When you're writing an offer these days, you always need to have a pre-approval letter. In order to receive a pre-approval letter, you've got to talk to a lender. The lender is going to ask you for certain information like your W-2 forms, your taxes, those types of things you're going to have to provide them to show them you're going to be able to pay that loan back, that you're an honest person, you've got the cash flow necessary to carry that mortgage. It protects them. A seller is going to want to see that pre-approval letter. And a good listing agent is actually going to call the person that writes that pre-approval letter to confirm that they've done their research and find out who you are. A pre-approval letter from any institution is important. However, some out there are able to write pre-approval letters without doing much research at all. We know who those lenders are. We tend to stay away from them. I don't want to be negative here. However, it's important that you get your pre-approval letter from a reputable firm that actually asks you the right questions so you're not disappointed later on after doing an inspection, find that you were never able to borrow that money anyway. Pre-approval letters are incredibly important. These are just a few phrases and words that we use in the real estate industry. If you've got some others that you want to know exactly what they mean, ask the questions. Shoot me an email. Send me a message of the notes down below. Ask your lender. Ask an escrow agent. But just get the answers. This is a very important process and you don't want to assume anything. And if we're talking too fast to you sometimes about the process, slow us down. Let us know. We do this every day. You don't. My name is Tim Olson and I'm a real estate agent with John L. Scott.